I would like to begin by thanking the European Wind Energy Association for affording me a brief opportunity to address you by means of this video message. Standing here in Nairobi today and looking at the prospect of both Paris and the Conference of the Parties still lying ahead of us, and perhaps more importantly trying to envisage a future in which our response to global warming is increasingly linked also to a transformation in our economies and as we often in UNEP has termed it, have termed it a transition towards a green economy, gives me reasons to be more optimistic than pessimistic. I think many of us know that the pace of change has been too slow, that our ability to respond to the challenge of global warming is not in line with where science is telling us we should be. But let me, particularly in an address to you, the pioneers and in many ways the advocates of this transition, to offer you a couple of reasons of why I think we have reasons to be hopeful, if not complacent. This year, the year 2015, has seen a number of very significant developments. Not only a return in the investment sector for renewable energy that has allowed us to document a 17% increase in 2014 in renewable energy infrastructure investments, now surpassing the level of $270 billion and accounting for almost 50% of all new power infrastructure invested in during the year 2014 worldwide. These are milestones that even 10 years ago may have seemed unthinkable, and today they are a reality. Perhaps in addressing you here from Nairobi, our headquarters in Kenya, it is also important to emphasize that this trend is no longer one that is confined to industrialized or to the richer nations of this world. We can point to many breakthroughs across the global south in recent years, and indeed close to half of all that $270 billion invested in 2014 was actually invested in emerging and developing economies. This is another breakthrough that we should not underestimate and it speaks also to a broader set of agendas that have been captured in this year's major conferences that the United Nations has hosted. Whether it is the Financing for Development Conference in Addis Ababa earlier this year, the New York Summit that adopted a new Sustainable Development Agenda to the year 2030 and the 17 Sustainable Development Goals which for the first time not only are universal and speak to all nations, including in terms of their responsibility to act, but also integrated. We have broken through a barrier that very often has locked in the economic, the social and the environmental dimensions of development in separate silos. The SDGs are a deliberate and I believe a very successful attempt at projecting an integrated agenda. When it comes to renewable energy and to wind in particular, let me note here that when we speak to citizens in Africa, to governments on the African continent, we are also seeing a major shift occurring as we now speak and meet in the context of many of these international conferences. For Africa, the prospect of investing in renewable energy is as much about trying to be a part of the international effort to address the challenge of global warming as it is about access to energy. Many of you know the numbers, close to 70% of Africa's citizens do not have access to electricity, even now in the year 2015. Access to energy and access to clean energy has become an increasingly converging agenda and this in part explains some of the significant breakthroughs we have also seen on the African continent in recent years. Here in Kenya we now have the largest wind power farm on the continent under construction, from Morocco to Ethiopia to South Africa to Ghana but also many other nations, the prospect of investing in renewable energy as part of a domestic energy security pathway is now becoming not a hypothesis but a reality. What will be critical in the months and years to come, however, is to realize that availability of technology, the reduction in cost per unit or kilowatt hour, are critical enabling factors, but we must also address the issue of financing. I hope that during your conference you can also put some of your attention on the lessons that have been learned and also on the public policy and private sector and investment and financial and capital market contexts that need to evolve in order to enable the potential for renewable energy and wind power to be harnessed worldwide. UNEP recently released at the World Bank IMF annual meetings a report that we termed the inquiry into the design of a sustainable financial system. It looked particularly at the role of central banks and financial regulatory authorities in trying to incentivize a scaling up of investments from the financial and capital markets. Many of us may already uh, be familiar with the figure, but the financial assets of the banking system alone in the year 2014 
amounted to about 135 trillion US dollars. Much of that capital is searching for ways to invest and generate a return, irrespective of what kind of project it is. It is critical that in Paris we send an unquestionably clear signal into the world's both investment markets and financial and capital decision-making boardrooms that, that transition towards a low-carbon economy and with it the investment in a renewable energy infrastructure is now not only an inevitable reality but indeed one that will grow exponentially. This is the great opportunity to make both for nations that are still referred to as developing economies but also for industrialized countries to mobilize and leverage that private financial investment potential in order to make transitions happen faster. So we have the technology, we have learned a great deal about public policies, we now need to also address the scaling up in finance and that finance, let us be very clear, cannot only come from public sector budgets, it is reliant and dependent and contingent upon mobilizing financial and capital markets as well. South Africa has over the past three to four years shown us how through an auction system some remarkable developments were possible. 14 billion dollars in investments have been raised, 80 percent of those coming from the private sector financial markets of South Africa in terms of expanding significantly renewable energy infrastructure in South Africa. Similar trends are now beginning to emerge and here in Kenya we have also seen with the Geothermal Development Corporation a kind of public policy model that allows private sector actors to play a very significant role and therefore upscaling also the amount of investment that is mobilized. Europe has its own lessons and certainly through many of the ups and downs has still maintained a significant leadership role in both the experimental but also in the scaling up and the mainstreaming of the deployment of renewable energy and particularly wind power. Please do provide those lessons learned but also the vision with which we can move forward not only to a European audience but indeed to a global audience that is extremely interested. We in UNEP will continue our work which is in part rooted in the science and the imperative from environmental change to make this transition but also to allow countries to learn from one another and therefore gain the confidence that the future at least of the energy and electricity generating sector is going to be renewable. Thank you very much.